Like, if you really believe that every girl in porn is sex trafficked, you don't understand at all. At all. At all. Like, you don't even understand human trafficking because the vast majority of human trafficking ha- happens in, like, domestic and agricultural labor. Yes. Like, sex trafficking is a tiny, tiny part yeah. of human trafficking. And, like, we really should be talking about the millions of other people that actually are being trafficked. Yes. And those people are, like, your maids and your gardeners and, like, the people that pick your food. And yeah. those people are actually victims in many cases. And those are the people we should be trying to help. Yeah, but that's not sexy trafficking. Not sexy. We want to talk about sexy trafficking. You know, we want to get like up in arms about something that has to do with sex and that just solidifies, you know, our preconceived notions that like any woman who's involved in the sex industry is there by force and that women don't have any kind of real sexual desires and they don't have agency over their careers and- Basically, that women are not sexual creatures. Yeah, exactly. That women, yeah, that women don't like sex. There's something wrong about liking sex if you're a woman. And that was something that I dealt with, like, even as a teenager. Like, I grew up very, very Catholic um, and, uh, like, very repressed in that way. And I, when I started to, like, explore my sexuality, like, as a teenager and was just trying to figure out, like, what I'm into and stuff, like, I had that moment of being, like, maybe I'm a bad person. Mm-hmm. Like, no one's ever going to love me. I'm broken. Mm-hmm. Like, and it took me so long. And it took me getting into BDSM and, like, meeting all these people that were, and it's been very similar to, like, that are successful and that are happy and have good lives and relationships. And, like, that's not the truth. But if any, if all everyone tells you your whole life is that that's the case, that these women are all victims and that you can't like sex as a woman and it's gross and dirty and wrong, that's what you're going to believe. Right. Right. You know? And and growing, you know, I mean, as children, we obviously believe what our parents tell us, mm-hmm. right? Because we don't know any better. And it's so hard to rewrite what we grew up believing. And I mean, so personally, like, I'm super fortunate because, you know, yeah. obviously my parents, parents were, were awesome. Yeah. And my mom <laughs> slept with everybody. <laughs> and they were very sexually open. They were swingers. And my mom always told me, like, the human body's beautiful. So, like, I grew up with zero shame around sex, like absolutely none. Um, So I've never had to deal with that, but I just can't imagine what it's like to be in a place where, you know, you have to like spend your whole life trying to over undo the teachings that you had as a child um, and your, your shame around your sexuality, because it's one of the biggest driving forces behind human yeah. behavior which is probably why we feel like men especially not all men just saying um feel like they need to control it yeah totally you know and yeah because it is I mean it's a huge part of our brains it's a part of our lives it's biologically the thing we're put here to do yeah so like literally it, like yeah. what is the meaning of life you're here to f- you're here to f- and like that for- is what mother about- nature wants <laughs> you to do is just yeah, walking that down and being like no just actually we can like control that like within ourselves and not like no like that is just a recipe like shame in general is suppressing anything like that it's yeah. just gonna bubble up through the cracks and it's gonna come mm-hmm. out bad bad it's so gonna bad. it's like shame is this like toxic poison and you just are like pressing this thing down and it's gonna come up in these mutated not healthy ways and yeah, then you like have to go back and correct that as an adult. Like, I mean, and I, I did a ton of work on it. I spent hours and hours in classes learning about this kind of stuff yeah. because like, I recognized, and I'm very, very glad that I recognized it young. I was, you know, like 20, 21 when I was like, shit, I got to go like address this. This was mm-hmm. not right. The way that I was taught to think about this. And if I don't go learn about how can I express my sexuality in a healthy and safe way, I'm, I'm going to end up getting hurt. Right. You know, like, it, right. it, cause it really was too, because I'm someone that is attracted to like extreme sex and I do, mm-hmm. I do it so much less now too. I almost feel like it was weirdly like a phase, <laughs> like the weirdest kind of teenage rebellion ever. No, but that makes so much sense. You know, you yeah. were denied all of these things and you were, mm-hmm. you know, made to believe that all of these things were bad. And so you want to explore. I mean, you know, like yeah. people, human beings always want what they can't have, right? Totally. Yeah. So, like 
you gotta go out there and you know, we all have our sexual experimentation phase. Hey guys, if you wanna support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.